right then, all right then, we are back with more Clockwork City. And this time we'll be, instead of um, running along with Roz, we'll be focusing on the job. But before that, I realized I didn't actually bring in the card in the last episode. So let's just take a tally of where we are right now. Currently, we got anime style artwork. The setting is not in Japan. We have t we, it does not have text. We have a fantasy supernatural theme going on, but because there aren't, it isn't an all Japanese cast. Uh, we won't get that bingo from that way, which sucks. But there you go. We do have romantic themes here. Uh, we have a female protagonist. And it technically is a slice of life tale. It's a different kind of slice of life tale, but it is a slice of life tale. So we are filling that block in. Let's see. It's not the creator's first game. We do have romantic themes. And we will see right now if the gay option is available. All right. First things first, though. Let's be good employees now. And instead of living it up with Roz and getting more almost mortally wounded and dead in the resulting crash and burn. We're gonna do our job. I I think I should focus on the job. It's my first day. I should show a little bit of professionalism. And who knows? Maybe if I get there early, they might have another job for me. As I spoke those words, Roz gave me a look that made me shudder. She seemed so disappointed in me. She had seemed so excited, so happy. And in one fell swoop, all of that had melted away. I felt a whimper catch my throat, and I clutched at my hair tightly. <sighs> Fine, whatever. Don't think for a moment they'll give a crap, though. Humans don't care about us, Dita, and some of them actively hate us. Try, to, try not to interact with them any more than you have to. And definitely don't go down onto the streets. But we didn't pick the thug life. Rob! <laughs> The third life chose us. I'm gonna get shot for that comment. Anyway. <laughs> Jeez, there's no need to try and scare me like that, Roz. Just because I wanted to go get my work done. That's not fair. <sighs> oh, look. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. Just please be careful. Don't get yourself killed or anything. It made me look bad. I tried to talk to... Talk, talk again, excuse me. But Roz had al was already stomping off. Hey, hang on, let me back this up. I'm reading way too fast. I tried to talk again, but Roz was already stomping off, gathering speed to leap onto the next roof over. Even though I knew she was joking around, I let out a faint whine as my head swam. I shook my head with a sigh and wandered about aimlessly on the roof, ripping the paper and string from the package. Beneath it was more brown packaging, and as I thought, white string, with a piece of card hanging from it. The card was, ad was an address some way away from here, and it'd take me a good few hours to get to it. Maybe I should have taken the time to raise rods instead. I shook my head firmly as I thought, of thought that, shooing away any, any thoughts of regret. This was supposed to be a happy day for me, one where I didn't dwell on the what ifs and the could have been. This was my day, the first day I was truly on my own, and I was not going to waste the opportunity. As I slipped the package ba back into my pack, I looked up and could see the sun through the grimy smog of the city. Yeah, my time. This is my time. I ran forward and practically cartwheeled off the roof, using my augmentation to spring forward. Oh, sorry, I accidentally hit the volume button there. Using my augmentation to spring my, my body upwards, landing on a higher roof with a heavy thud. My, my, my momentum kept me running forward, and I let out a little giggle, feeling the wind rush around me. As I ran, the worries that I had left bubbled away into nothing. I was no longer concerned about home. I was no longer worried about Roz's reaction. The adrenaline that came from making a perfect jump surged through me, and I felt truly alive. On and on I sped over the rooftops, my feet thundering across corrugated metal, past hissing pipes and screaming turning clogs, parts of large crane machines that towered above me. I saw people below me, hear the me metallic clang of hammer on metal. I reveled in it all. I was alive and so was the city. 
I have finally found my place, and I wanted to let the world know. I cried out with joy as I almost flew over one impressively large gap, rolling as I landed, giggling wildly to myself. <clears throat> oh, hold on. Uh, audio check, audio check. Okay, yeah, there's just not music in this part. Okay, we're good. Going back. I must have run for a few hours, maybe even more. I simply let myself go, enjoying the freedom granted to me by this amazing city of metal. After I was done having fun, I found myself sliding down a copper pipe, sparks flying from my augmentation as I did so. I dropped onto a little wooden platform that was still quite high up from the ground and knocked on the door. I waited for a few moments until I could hear the heavy clomp 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 of boots on wood. The door in front of me was flung open, but all I could see was a cloud of steam and a dark shape. Okay, what voice should I do? <laughs> Maybe I should do the Sander Cleegan voice, the hound from the um, Game of Thrones. That's one of my favorite characters, man. The cr a lot of people have been giving him crap lately because he slapped the kid, but honestly, he's the hound. It's his character. The a lot of these characters aren't nice people. They're just going to slap some folks around. But uh, let me treat if I can get the voice right. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Uh, your father was a killer. Your husband will be a killer. Your sons will be a killer. I am a killer. <laughs> oh my god. He has the most he doesn't get a lot of scenes, but the the hound is a badass. Like this video if you agree that the hound is a badass. And Arya. Are they're two badasses riding together. Hopefully this won't end like it does like I'm told it ends in the books. Anyway. What? His voice was harsh. His voice was harsh. His words barked at me like I was some sort of annoyance. I don't know, maybe I should... Hold on. Back it up. I like the back button. That's a nice touch. What? There we go. Blah, blah, blah. His voice barked at me like I was some sort of annoyance. I pulled the delivery from my pack, shaking a little as I looked up at the looming shadow. My hand instinctively went to my ponytail, tugging at it weakly. Uh, parcel for you? It's um, my first day, so I don't really... Without a word, the figure snatched a parcel from my hand and threw a small purse at me. It hit me square in the chest and fell to the ground, spilling a handful of copper coins. Ah! No, 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 no! As I scrambled to collect the rolling coins, the figure stomped back, stomped back to the door, letting out a harsh chuckle. I don't give a shit if it's your first day or your last dray. Get lost! I hope I hope y'all could hear the great Sander Cleegan impression I just did, cause it was quite awesome if I do say so myself. The door slammed in my face, and I looked up looked up at it from the floor. My lip quivered a little, and my heart sank. That was my first interaction with a human. And he was a little mean to you, but he didn't hit you. He paid you. <laughs> He could have like I he could have been I hate Dre. Go eat a turnip or something along those lines. And not giving you any money. He paid you, he took his package and he went back in his house. So what? Okay, maybe it's just that I'm a wizard bastard's talking, but Okay, if this chick starts crying, seriously. My heart was still pounding as I clutched the copper coins in my hand. As I stared at the door, its wooden fascia stared back, mocking me. I felt my breath hitch a little as I stood, felt the beginning of tears sting, sting in the back of my eyeballs. I let out a gentle with whimper, and shoving the coins into a pocket, I turned and ran. Seriously, she, she's crying over this. Okay, small editorial moment. If you wanted to make this scene effective, have him shout a slur, have him not pay her. Have him actually be cruel just because she's a Dre. It's, this sounds just from the brief interaction we get from this character. It sounds like any interaction he has with anybody that comes across his door. She's not special. She's just... She's at the door. It's Tuesday. For her, this is the most traumatic experience of her life. For the guy that she delivered it to, it's a Tuesday. So... 
It's not that dramatic, and I don't like the music trying to make it that dramatic. I scrambled up onto the nearest roof and took off at a high speed. At high speed, caring little where I ran to. My cheeks burned brightly in embarrassment, and I could feel the tears, tears building even more as I thudded on. <laughs> I ran on what, for what seemed like an eternity, but was likely only a few minutes, scrambling up pipes, scraping my legs on, on jutting metal as I ran on. The exuberance I had felt moments ago was gone, replaced by disappointment and fear. I let out the scream as I ran on, stumbling over this and that, until I ran almost directly into something. I toppled backwards and stayed on my rear, my eyes clenched tightly shut. Seriously, editing, editing, editing! Hey, there's no need to body check me. I know how, I know I'm awesome, but come on, don't get that eager to get in my pants. <laughs> hey, Dita, are you okay? Dita! As I opened my eyes, I saw her stood above me, concerned in her eyes. She looked like she had been running fast, and there was a little there was a little breath escaping her. She had clearly been putting a lot of effort to get here. Relax! I launched myself forward, whirling as I clutched against her. I sobbed loudly, practically hanging off her as I did so. The woman's arms felt cold on my back, but I didn't care. She held me close and nuzzled down against my hair. And there's that petting we were talking about in part one. What happened? Do I need to break someone? N no, it it's just I delivered and I was excited and they just they didn't care. They didn't care at all. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I should have been there for you. It's, it's just... I know. I know all about it. Hey, Dita, look at me. As I looked up into her eyes, I felt my breath catch in my throat. I stared at the woman, still gently sobbing, her eyes determined and her jaw firm. Come on, come on, come on, there we go. This is not your fault. Don't blame yourself for any of this. Humans don't like Dre. It's as simple as that. They hate anything they can't control. I should have introduced you to this before now. I'm really sorry. Her hand rubbed my shoulder gently, and I couldn't help but smile. Even after how hurt she had been earlier, she still worried about me enough to come and find me. I held her tightly for a little while longer, sniffing the last of my sobs away. It's okay. Really, it's fine. I owe you so much anyway. Are you done with your job? You didn't get in trouble because of me, did you? They, they might not get their package till tomorrow, but so what if I don't turn up? I'm still the best there is. Not like I need this money from crappy little jobs like this. I got the important one done anyway. Thank you. Really, thank you for coming out here. Just for me. I really appreciate it. Ross smiled and pulled me against her with one arm, an affectionate little gesture that, as she began to pave onward. I followed her movements as we picked our way along the rooftops. Eventually, we stopped. Excuse me, neck crack. Hey, Dita. You know how we've gotten to know one another, right? I was wondering something. <laughs> Gay option check. Cue the music, boys. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold the music, hold the music. I nodded my head and sniffed one last time, wiping away my tears with my good arm. As I did, a scent drifted my way. It wasn't a nice smell. It was the scent of burning. I held up a hand to get Ross to stop, flashing her an apologetic glance. Ross, do you smell that? I looked around, and a little way off, masked mostly by an awning, was a building billowing smoke. It was set a little way out from most of the other buildings around it, like it was the center of a courtyard. It's a human problem. Let them deal with it. Human or not, what if someone gets hurt? Can we at least go and see if we can help out? Maybe form a bucket chain or something? Is it really going to be that much of a problem? Have you already forgotten what happened to you? 
They hate us. They fear us. They'd probably blame us. Who knows what's going on with that fire? It could be a gang attacking another gang. That'd be dangerous to get into. But what if it's not? What if it's family trapped inside a room? Little kids, a scared mother. I I'm sorry, Ross, but if this, but if I don't at least try and help out, I'm going to feel like such a terrible person. Please, won't you at least support me? Jeez, oh, your innocence is going to be the death of me. All right, I'll go look for a water supply, but don't go in there, damn it! I don't want you getting hurt. As she ran off, I noticed the same slight disappointment in her tone, but this time it didn't hit me as hard. If I were to hazard a guess, even if she didn't want to help, she was still a little proud of me for wanting to do so. With this urging me on, I took off towards the building. My augment was a little different to the one Ross had. Instead of built-in extras, it was heavy and solid. It allowed me to anchor myself, to push hard. It was also a lot sturdier than hers. It allowed me to effectively hang from a rooftop without any effort on my part, and I did just that, getting closer to try and hear anything from within. As I craned my neck, I could hear a voice from the building. Help! Don't act like you're not impressed, people. Without much of a thought, I leaped over to the building, which was not billowing acrid black smoke from any available outlet. With a hefty tug, my augment ripped a metal sheet from the side of a building, the building, excuse me, causing more smoke to pour outward. I hesitated for a moment before continuing. Once inside of the building, all I could feel was heat. It was much hotter than the city itself, and the black smoke did make it hard for even me to see. Hello? Is anyone around here? I shouted loudly, keeping low to try and avoid most of the smoke. The smoke made me cough a little. But I could still breathe normally. I shuddered to think what might have, what it might have been like for a human in this mess of blackness. I could hear the crackle of fire beneath me, the splintering of wood, and the clang of metal. I didn't have long to act. As I began pushing deeper into the building, I caught a glance of the tour around. There were sketches, drawings, even blueprints of the city. Whatever this place was, it looked important. As I pushed open a door, I was met with a searing blast of fire. I dodged to one side, avoiding any major damage. I could hear coughing coming from somewhere nearby. Where are you? <laughs> My search became more frantic as I began searching about, and within moments I found a young looking male beneath a large panel of thin metal. I tugged to the side, blah blah blah, wait. I tugged to the side and helped him to his feet. <laughs> blah blah blah, probably wouldn't cut it. Ever so good of you, dear heart, but a rapid exit would be well advised at this moment in time. Uh, what? We need to leave. Fast. This building seemed like it's coming down. As he said that, the building lurched faintly to one side. I let out a squeak, stumbling back a few paces. The male was leaning onto me and let out a yelp as I moved. He had lightly twisted his ankle in the incident with the fallen metal. I nodded my head and propped him up, lifting him with barely any effort thanks to my strained metalwork arm. I ushered him to the hole I had created, and as I stepped to leave, the building began to collapse. I dove from the building, landing right onto the edge of a rooftop. My grip on him slided, and a young man began to fall. I twisted my body and grabbed him with my good arm, letting my augment sink into the roof, anchoring us there. Whew! That was close. And Mel watched with wide eyes as the tower began to crumble. Collapsing in on itself was a noise that was a mix of the crack of wood, the whine of metal, and the scream of panicked people. I couldn't bring myself to watch as I pulled us up both slow pulled us both up slowly. Yeah. And that was certainly a lucky incident. Rotten luck I ducked into that building to escape some thugs, and the blasted thing catches on fire. I owe you my life, dear heart. Name's Nikolai, gentleman adventurer. Thank you ever so for your timely arrival. Ah, uh, it, it was, it was nothing, really. Ah! As I finally looked at him in the light, I realized that he was another human. The first human I had ever touched. I began to pa panic a little, feeling my cheeks begin to flush red yet again. Incredible luck. 
And I must say, I have no objections being rescued by such a dashing young dre such as yourself. A tree for the health and the eyes. I say, don't suppose you'd help me gather up some of this coin, would you? <laughs> my hand shot to my ponytail with a squeak. My head was spinning. First I had been ridiculed by a human, and now one was complimenting me. It was all too much for me to handle. I set my jaw firmly, making it clear that there was to be no monkey business. No? Oh well, never mind. Do you have a name, dear heart? Or should I simply keep referring to you as my magnificent savior? My... my name's... Adita. It's, uh... it's my first day. I sounded like such a buffoon. No, you're just a dork, dear. At that moment, I wish I could have been swallowed up by the ground. I could feel the heat radiating from my cheeks. Hotter even than the blazing building that was even now smoldering in its rubble. I took a few steps away from him, checking him up and down. A magnificent name indeed. Tell me, Miss Adita, how may I repay you for, for your selfless act? <laughs> Cut blocked! God! Damn, Ross. <laughs> he reached a hand forward to touch and touched it to my cheek. I flinched away from his touch, and as I did so, a wave of water splashed against the male, soaking him completely. You can repay her by leaving her alone. Ross had appeared from nowhere, bucket in one hand, hose in another. She appended the bucket on the roof and set the hose into it. She uh, letting it spray wash onto the street below. She just stopped over me, putting herself between me and Nikolai. What the devil? Who on earth? Ah, couldn't have asked for a better remedy to the heat. Many thanks for that too. Of course, should the lady request, I will never again grace her presence with my own. And yet, I did so wish to get to know her. It was impressive, really. He had managed to retain almost every ounce of dignity, even whilst dripping wet. I glanced up between him and Roth, my head spinning wildly. I didn't want to upset my mentor, but at the same time, I was intrigued. My hand still clutching onto my hair, I spoke. What should I do? Why are you asking me? I don't know. Uh, I guess this means there's going to be at least one more ending. Uh, we'll do a quick save here. And we'll load it from this point for our last playthrough, so we'll hold the final card for that and the final review for that. Because we'll probably end this right at the, or close to the 30 minute mark. So, we'll side with Roth, you know, for the petting and the pet names and the whole mentorship thing. I gotta say, so far this was much more complete than just the solo Nikolai route and I guess that they really do prefer the Ross relationship or friendship rather than the Nikolai one uh, but there's definitely some imbalance there and she gets the better half of it so anyway sorry can't do it uh, I'm too turned off by your dorkness sorry I, I don't I can't I turned and began to run from the scene. I couldn't bring myself to look back as I ran. I, I felt too embarrassed, so foolish despite having done nothing to warrant it. My cheeks were flushed and my heart pounding against my chest. That wasn't me trying to stutter to add effect. I was trying to keep up with trying to speak too fast. Apologies. Dita, wait, please. Let's get it to a halt upon hearing Roz's voice. She came up to me, panic a little as she did so. <coughs> Holy light, you are fast. That must have been how you managed to deliver it before I even made it, made it here. You're really something, you know that? Stop that. I'm nothing special. I can't even begin to tell you how wrong you are. Do you recall, just before the fire, I wanted to ask you something? Okay, boys, now you can cue the music. There we go. My memory was a little fuzzy, being filled with images of flames and the smell of burning, but I nodded my head weakly, still too embarrassed to look at her. Well, and I'm not just saying this to humor you, or to make you feel better. I was going to ask this. Did you... She faltered. For the faintest of moments, she seemed unsure of herself. I had never seen Roz unsure of anything. Maybe... want to hang out sometime? Not like as student and teacher, or as co-workers, but as friends. 
I know a good Dre Cafe that serves a coconut cake to, that's to die for. She scratched her chin, an awkward look on her face. Her cheeks had begun to turn red, matching the redness on my own cheeks. I glanced away from her, a little giggle escaping my throat. We stood, stewing in our mutual embarrassment filled with silence, until I eventually plucked up the courage to move. I took hold of one of her hands and clasped it firmly. Roth, I'd love to! This is just an awkward CG. Can someone who's watching this comment on this? It, to me, it may just be the limbs. The metal limbs, but it looks awkward. I had been intended to talk normally, but my throat wouldn't allow me to allow me anything more than a hushed whisper. The woman smiled at me and gently pulled me against her body, hugging me softly. As we stood there, holding one another upon the roof, the sun begin beginning to <laughs> ah, the sun beginning as the scent managed to break through the smoggy air to deliver a warm orange glow to the whole city. I took in a soft breath and smiled, nuzzling back against Roz. What a perfect day I had been treated to. And there's our second ending. Mu it's much better than just going through Nicholas' route by itself. It's still a little rough though, but the characterization felt a lot stronger. And the story felt a lot smoother paced. It felt more complete. Uh, we'll try the third route now and see. That's probably the middle route, the average route, if you don't have enough points stacked on either side so um we're gonna come back with that and that will be the end for clockwork city i'll catch you guys next time